by way of frequency domain perspective, we have in general, uh, we're able to get a, a Bode plot or what is often referred to as a frequency response plot. So this axis is magnitude, this axis is frequency. And so in general, if we were to perform an experiment on the system, or actually a series of experiments, and apply a sequence of sinusoids to our system, we could actually go through, so for, we apply a sinusoid at, of a system at a particular frequency, say this frequency, we would uh, look at the output of the system, the magnitude and phase, and we would get, a, or in this case, just the magnitude we'd be looking at. We get the magnitude. We do a number of experiments at that same frequency down here, we would get um, consistent results. That is, the results would be pretty much repeatable time after time. As we increase frequency, again, because there, there is often, uh, again, at, at lower frequencies, I, I mean, at higher frequencies, um, uncertainty. And so over here, for example, especially where the magnitude is, is getting smaller, we apply a sinusoid at this frequency, we get a particular magnitude out for the output frequency. We do it again and we get a slightly different value of the frequency. We try it again, we get a slightly different value of the frequency. And we can do a number of experiments and find, you know, an average value of the frequency. But we have with the, within the, at the same frequency, a number of different values that we can get. So we apply a, we, we apply a, uh, an input and, at, at the frequency and there's uncertainty here. Okay. And so we have error bars in our measurement. So this is an important aspect of error bars when, when you do an experiment. And again, the error bars may increase because it's hard to measure the effect of the system at various frequencies. Okay, so it's hard to know. And so we may have, um, there may be something else going on that makes things uncertain here. Okay, so some of this may be associated with the resolution of of your measurement devices, it may be associated with unmodeled dynamics, and, and so forth. But again, here we don't, this is actually, the Bode plot is a model of the system. And so the blue is really what we're obtaining in the in the experiment. So it even without a model, we can still get a Bode plot. A Bode plot, in fact, is, is a kind of model itself. It's called a non-parametric model. And what this shows is that your experiment has, has error associated with it that is frequency dependent. So this, this band around our nominal transfer function is the kind of thing that happens because of measurement error, for example. So when we come to robustness, again, we can have a number of different uncertainty models. We can have additive uncertainty, multiplicative uncertainty. We've talked a little bit about both of those. And then there's feedback uncertainty. So if you have a feedback loop, um, a stability criteria is the Nyquist criteria, and we also have the small gain argument. So we've looked at that a little bit. Now let's look uh, briefly at the Nyquist stability issues. So for a given plant, we have a Nyquist plot. Okay, so, so basically the Nyquist plot is a plot of the transfer function where S is along the imaginary axis and, and Oftentimes, we'll only get half of the plot. That is, we'll only have the, the part of the plot that goes from frequency 0 up to infinity. The full Nyquist plot is actually a contour that goes all the way up the imaginary axis, around, down to the imaginary axis. So the semicircle of radius infinity, and then up the imaginary axis back to 0. And so often, when you see a Nyquist plot, it will just be part of that. It will just be the top portion. Here's zero, from zero up to infinity in, in the frequency. It doesn't include the semicircle or the, the part along the, mag, the negative imaginary axis. So we have an, uh, a Nyquist plot. And if our, syst our open loop system is stable, then the, what the Nyquist plot tells us, so the, again, the Nyquist plot is of the open loop system. What the, what the Nyquist plot tells us that is that if we have no encirclements of the point minus one, 
then our closed loop is stable. So we plot the open loop, we look at the Nyquist plot, and that tells us information about the closed loop. Okay, so we have a Nyquist plot. Suppose our uncertainty has a weighting function. And so here's an example of a weighting function. Again, this, this weighting function is, is only specified by magnitude, um, not necessarily phase. So we, we have that. So this is our weighting function. That is, at, at low frequencies, we have a small weighting function because our uncertainty is small, whereas at higher frequencies, it may be large. Our uncertainty may be larger. Okay, so we can think of W as being um, kind of a, a, an envelope in which the uncertainty lies in the frequency domain. Okay, so that's that's one way roughly of looking at it. And usually we'll choose W to actually be not just an envelope, but a transfer function. Okay, so that it, it actually is a rated, it is a weighted fu weighting function, but it is a rational function. So we have our nominal Nyquist plot. So that's what we have over here. And then we have uh, our nominal with our weighting function okay so at each at each point along this nyquist plot our weighting function which is our uncertainty casts a circle around that point a circle of uncertainty around that point and so what i've shown here is a, a number of points along the nyquist plot and the circle uh, of uncertainty that corresponds for example with this function so notice it's at low frequencies, we have small values. At this point, we have a large value, and then the values kind of settle out. So when we look at the, the, the magnitude of the circles, the radius of the circles, over here I have very small radius circles. At this point here, the circles are, have gotten large, okay? And then eventually they, they decrease a little bit, and then they stay roughly constant. They stay rough, roughly constant through here. Okay, so... At each point, the, Ny the, the Nyquist plot of the true system lies not necessarily on this line. This is the line of the nominal plant. It lies within the band formed around the Nyquist plot by these circles. So these circles are called gersh or the band here is called the gersh, -Gor -Gersh -Goren band. And... Um, so the important thing now is it's not whether the Nyquist plot encircles the minus one point. It's whether this band touches that minus one point. Okay, and so that's the issue. So this, this band is like error bars, but it's error bars around our Nyquist plot as opposed to error bars around our Bode plot. Okay, so it's not really bars. It's really just a, it's a band. And so as long as that band does not touch the minus one point, then we know our system is stable for all uncertainties. Now, if it does touch that point, that does not mean the system is unstable. Okay? Because, remember, this is, uh, this is stable for all uncertainties. We might not have the uncertainty that would make us touch that point. So, again, that's why this is conservative, right? That's where the conservative comes in. The system might actually still be stable because, remember, we have a band. And so if, if for example, this point were actually touching that point, that would tell us that, w that we're not stable for all uncertainties, but our actual uncertainty, instead of being on this side of the band, could be on this side of the band, in which case we have, we have a, quite a distance from, from the point where we're actually touching. Okay, And so... So our actual uncertainty may be different than the, the uncertainty of the system within the entire set. So that's where, when we talk about conservative, that's what we, we're talking about. The system might actually be stable even though the band touches that point. So what we know for sure is if the band does not touch that point, then our system is stable, okay, regardless of where the uncertainty lies. So an important question in all of this is, how, um, how would we actually design a controller to ensure robust stability? Okay. How would we actually design a controller? So the controller needs to take into account our plant 
It needs to take, take into account the weighting function for the uncertainty, and then it um, and so that it needs to design a controller so that the control the control embedded within the system satisfies the needed inequalities. And we, we've seen kind of what that looks like uh, somewhat. So, but in terms of actually designing a controller, well, I recommend the E552. We'll get into that kind of thing. Stay tuned for the proofs of the small game theorem.